this is Christopher Davis Shannon, and I have now traveled across the Atlantic to the town of Radstock in the county of Somerset in the kingdom of Wessex to see the place where my ukulele was built by this man right here, Mr. Liam Kirby. Hello. <laughs> Liam, could you tell us a little bit about the kingdom of Wessex? Uh, no one's called me that for a very long time, Christopher. That's the main thing. We're not going to worry about that here. But what we are going to do is Liam is actually has a uke right here that he is working on that is in the style of the uke that I play every day. And he's going to show you how it's done. I have to be building at the moment a soprano ukulele, very much same model as Christopher's. So it's, uh, it's what I call a May soprano. So it's a short scale Hawaiian style soprano ukulele. And because I haven't put the back on yet, you can see that what happens inside a ukulele is not very much at all, ideally. Um, they're very lightly built and you want as little to stop the um, to stop the, uh, the motion and the, the sound as possible. So enough reinforcement here to kind of stop the, the top entirely caving in on itself. And a little bit of reinforcement where the bridge is going to go. But other than that, you know, they're not complicated beasts inside. Um, the top the way I build them, uh, I build in the Spanish style, where instead of building a box and a neck and then slamming them together later, you build starting with the top uh, and a neck that kind of starts like, like that, locked up. And then those kind of get attached to each other. And then the sides fit into slots in the neck block. So this and this are one one piece of wood with slots. The neck fits into that, so the sides fit into that, and then the back goes on. Uh, the top is attached to the sides, not directly like at that seam, but with all these little these little guys that are called ten tentelones, which are glued in individually. And then once the back is on, we can pull out the binding. Ideally, we would have more of this fancy, colourful stuff that I used on Christopher's, but it's not available anymore. Uh, and then the fingerboard. I'll make a fingerboard. I got the fingerboards. Let's see what I've got. What's this? This is a concert ukulele fingerboard that I made. That will go on. And then from there, that will kind of set the width of the neck and, and everything, and I'll carve the neck to that. So it's kind of a backwards process compared to how how most guitars now are made. But it's a style that suits working with hand tools instead of instead of machinery and kind of working at a sort of a human pace. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the key to ukuleles. So in addition to ukuleles, Liam also builds a host of ridiculous other instruments. They do. So let's look at some ridiculous instruments that he built. And first up, we're going to look at the Hawaiian tenor guitar, which yes. is an instrument that does not exist. Thank you. It's a pigment of my imagination. Uh, it's a, it's a, a Weissenborn style lap slide, but at a tenor guitar, baritone, ukulele scale, and with only four strings. Because 90% of the Hawaiian style is played on the top strings, really. You don't even need that one. But I thought four was a good number to, to like, knock it down to. What, what inspired you to create this thing? Uh, this is like one of those things where I was like, because I, I, I play this style, and it was very much like, I'm not using these strings, this is pointless. <laughs> That's why I play ukulele and yeah. guitar, you know. No one, yeah. no one needs the bottom strings. <laughs> Don't tell guitar players that. But, um, yeah, so it's just kind of a flight of fancy. Uh, and I thought I could probably build like a little four-string version of that and have it to play have to play lead parts on. It'd be fun. Yeah. And then I built a couple. This is the second one that I built. And I built for myself. Built out of real nice reclaimed koa. Uh, and it came out all loud and pretty. Very loud. So. There's one thing about Liam's instruments, are they're pretty much the loudest acoustic instruments I've ever played. With that, here's a guitar that he built. 
That is also ridiculously loud. You said this is the third guitar you built? Fourth? Uh, that is third, yes. Third. Third. Now this is made in the style of, of the old luthiers um, doing, this is all ladder braced, yeah. right? Yeah, in here. Right. So this is, this is like those traditional old parlor guitars, which are my favorite guitars, because much like with the ukes when he was talking about um, the minimal bracing on the inside, it's the same with guitars. We use a lot of what's called X bracing inside, which can take more tension from the top, but it doesn't vibrate nearly as much. Um, I what inspired you to go with the, the older style guitar as opposed to those more modern techniques that most people use? Uh, mainly just like old American music is what I listen to and I like funky, you know, borderline wonky sounding guitars. Yeah, and it is a wonky sound. You get this really throaty sound yeah, it's from the, the 12 fret acoustics and also they kind of, to me at least, because um, I, I play a very similar style guitar, that they sort of naturally distort faster mm -hmm. than other ones. That, much as the old Selmers did, Django Reinhardt's guitars, they get this natural like dirty overtone series that you just don't get from really nice poshly built modern acoustic guitars today that sound really sweet but they just don't have that that grit that you need yeah, for they don't, they don't the punch you in the face yeah it's it's not just those old records that sound like that the <laughs> instruments themselves have so much to to do with it because even if you strum this <laughs> That's my finger, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so loud, but you, you can hear just that, that mid-range presence that you don't hear from like a dreadnought or anything mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and, and speaking of guitars, so Liam's actually soon going to be working on another instrument for me, which is a, a tenor guitar, but luckily he has another one currently that's in production for our friends over at Bad Mouse Orchestra. This is your tenor guitar. It's happening. It's happening. And I touched it before you did. Yeah. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love these little regal style kind of guitar with a skinny neck. Yeah, and, and actually much like with, with your parlor guitar that you make as well, your tenor guitars these days generally have a more um, typical string length of, mm -hmm. of a standard acoustic guitar, which, which 23, 24, yeah. around cool. there. Where these are much shorter string lengths, which which were what tenor guitars were traditionally, because they come from tenor banjos, which were were a shorter scale length as yeah. well. We're gonna see the weird tenor banjo chord shapes that are all like that. Yeah, yeah. Too, and, and when you tune them in fifths, you can you get these these shapes that are impossible to play on any other instrument, which is what yeah. I love about tenor guitars so much. I play in uh, in mandolin or violin tuning on there, and I can accomplish all of these chords that. On six string guitar, I have to do some serious gymnastics mm -hmm. to make. Um, but uh, the other thing I love about um, about the tenor guitar is we were talking earlier about the Django Reinhardt, like old school comping, and so many of those three and four note chords come from the banjo players that were swapping mm -hmm. over. And those those chord voicings that we're always reaching for on six string guitar and tri jazz mm -hmm. and, and in that in those earlier styles like string band music actually lay out very conveniently on a tenor guitar and fifths because they were actually made for that where the guitar is kind of an, an adaption later yeah. later on. Um, now another really cool instrument that Liam has here is is a tip leg which we almost never see. Think of it as a slightly larger ukulele with way too many strings on it. Yeah, it's the tenor the tenor ukulele size. My since it's the same body shape as my tenor ukulele, but it's crazy deep. Uh, and it has ten strings on it, ten steel strings. <laughs> Play the tuning, <laughs> but this absurd jangly. Absurd jangly sound. They're a nightmare to intonate. The strings, getting the strings to be the same. This is like the, the classic problem with T players is that they are not in tune once you go past like the fifth fret. And that's why those players don't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and also the bridge is usually put, um, like pulled itself off under tension, which is why I've built this one in the style that people usually repair them, using a, using a mandolin style tailpiece that runs through, uh, and a big chunky saddle so I can intonate the strings properly, and then in theory, it actually intonates. 
So, so finally, let's look at one of your other ukuleles here. Oh, you have yeah. this beautiful one. Yeah, this here. one I built for myself. Only the finest things for the young. <laughs> does, that, does that actually have ebony no, tuning these, pegs these or those are the real These are peg heads. Um, ah. they're, they're internally geared. So they look. Oh, really? Yeah, they look They look the part. Modern they're technology is Yeah, I used a little bit of modern technology. Who knew? Is that legal? You can play it. <laughs> I, just don't tell anybody. Just don't publish this video. <laughs> but a, if you're watching this, don't, don't tell anyone about the, the tuners on here. They're not real. I just got sort of that classic like sound of the the original Hawaiian mm -hmm. ukes. That nice. Is, it, is this koa? This one. Yeah. This is made with the traditional wood for for most ukes, which is koa, which is quite a bit brighter than the uke that I have. And actually, it would be really nice to do a little little sound comparison. So we just heard that. You're having detuning there. Yeah. <laughs> So we're being a little off because I've been C. But you see, you hear a little bit of the difference between an all mahogany instrument and a koa instrument. So you get that ringing from koa that you just don't get mm -hmm. from mahogany. Has that beautiful top end to it. Um, but Liam, what do you think? Why don't, why don't we play a little tune together? Sounds good.